Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to first thank you for your precious time, and it's a great pleasure for us to share our experiences as lessons learned on 20 years of challenges to internal corrosion protection of subsea pipelines, corrosion inhibitor, or pH stabilization. In this presentation, as an outline, firstly, we will look upon basic concepts as introduction. Next, we will discuss corrosion protection methodologies. Then we will explain what are pH stabilization challenges and corrosion inhibitor monitoring issues. Finally, we will learn their merits and inferiorities as lessons learned. With reference to official statistical organizations, Iranian pipeline industry is ranked 8th amongst 120 countries. Asia as the leading oil and gas pipeline length have around 71,000 kilometers. In South Pars, Field developments, 37 sea lines in total length of 3,000 kilometers are under operation, based on available data by United States regulatory and DNV reports almost half of all pipelines incidents are caused by internal corrosion. Southport fluid contains 0.5 mol per cent H2S and 1.8 mol per cent CO2, and when pressure or temperature decreases, condensate water provoke corrosion with acid gas or make pH between 3.6 and 3.8. Moreover, one of the main issues with pipeline is the simultaneous occurrence of corrosion and hydrate formation. Common solution is the combined injection of corrosion and hydrate inhibitors, but they may have adverse effect on each other's functionality. In any case, a single compound to inhibit corrosion, hydrate formation, and scale deposition at the same time has not yet been developed. Thus, pipeline operators are dealing with the combined inhibitor injection effect. Specifically, in the case of lengthy pipelines, as for south parts, the temperature gradient between input and output flow causes massive formation of both hydrate and scales on the metal surface. Henceforth, in this article, 20 years of pipeline operation experience in south parts by different inhibition methods are discussed in detail. The South Pars field process facilities are developed in 24 identical integrated phases, except for phase 1 where the produced gas is dehydrated in a glycol package. In all other phases, the reservoir production is routed with minimum offshore processing to the shore via 32-inch multi-phase sea lines. All pipelines are bearing a 4-inch MEG piggyback line. The fluid of reach Monoethylene glycol sent to MEG regeneration unit, which is located on onshore, including four identical packages, that in normal operation, three units are online, alongside one unit in standby mode. The main purpose of the MEG regeneration unit is to reduce the water content of the rich MEG and maintain the concentration as per the specification, which is suitable for re-injection onto the offshore sea lines. MEG is injected at platform departure to prevent both hydrate formation and corrosion in the sea line. The onshore MEG regeneration unit provides solution of 70% MEG that contains 1.5 volume percent methyl diethanolamine as a pH control additive to prevent corrosion issues within the sea lines. The in situ pH at arriving point shall be kept above 7.04 to ensure effective corrosion mitigation. This technique is called pH stabilization technique or PST. Briefly, this method has low operating expenditure, is more green and results in excellent general corrosion rate. But on the other hand, it requires high capital investment and during operation has higher risk of scaling and top of line corrosion. The platform is equipped with corrosion inhibitor package to provide protection when pH stabilization technique is out of service. Injection rate is based on 20 ppm weight percent on total fluids. A well-suited inhibitor shall be effective in protecting surface in a wide range of operating conditions and diverse surface quality. Fluid regime and velocity has the utmost effect on the inhibitor efficiency. 
although higher hydrodynamic parameters causes flow accelerated corrosion it leads to inhibitor film persistency and better distribution by the way chemical interaction with other substances are also important on the inhibitor efficiency while all researchers were focused on the flow this important parameter has been neglected Briefly, this method requires lower capital investment and has lower sedimentation risk, but it has much higher operating expenditures and higher biochemical oxygen demand makes it an environmental hazard. Mostly important is the unreliability in measuring residual inhibitors concentration. The role of pH stabilization is capturing hydrogen ions and thus increasing bicarbonate concentration and reduce the fluid corrosiveness. However, as main limitation and drawback when the formation water contains high concentration of calcium cations above 500 ppm, the potential for calcium carbonate sedimentation increases drastically due to the increment in the insoluble calcium carbonates. Following the pressure drop, and to flow assurance issues noticed on sea lines on 2003, just a few years after operation, it was decided to run the caliper peak to identify and quantify the amount and distribution of scale inside the pipelines. At the first step, it was attempted to run a gauge peak to obtain a preliminary data on pipeline clearance. A severe damage to the received gauge peak, as is shown clearly indicated that the thickness of the scale deposits was much greater than anticipated. This is also demonstrated by CCTV inspection. Consequently, it was clearly understood that a special caliper peak tool is required to pass inside the pipeline with regards to the scale significance. The configuration for the 32-inch caliper peak used had 16 caliper arms and two odometer distance measurement wheels. The 16 caliper arms activated eight caliper sensors, that is two arms for each sensor. The aim of the caliper survey was to report the location and approximate quantity and of calcium carbonate deposits formed within the pipeline as an unwanted part of pH stabilization. An overview can be determined from the bore plots obtained by caliper peak. The top side pipework appears to be clear of deposits with the mean bore staying within a few millimeters of the nominal bore from the launcher throughout the pipeline bend in tree to the sea at the top of riser. Then in the vertical section of riser, diameter plot of data shows the extent and distribution of the scale where the minimum bore is in the orders of 500 millimeter, that is a bore reduction of 270 millimeter or 35% in the total length of 25 meter. The scale deposit thickness decreases further down the riser. And then where the fluid temperature drops to the heat exchange of pipe with seabed water, a radius plot of data showing the extent and distribution of scale deposits from the bottom of the riser through the dug leg. A minimum bore of 640 mm, that is a bore reduction of 132 mm or 17%, occurred and then again a localized reduction with a minimum bore of 630 mm over a length of almost 1 meter is observed. To dissolve the scale, a massive operation of acid cleaning done by injection of inhibited hydrochloric acid between pigs using pistoning technique and acid withdrawal by depressurizing and subsequent neutralization by soda ash. Another difficulty with pH stabilization is the sludge deposition due to contamination of glycol with salt, hydrocarbon, particulate, or corrosion inhibitor. These contingencies increase the cost for replacing glycol filters elements and also maintenance team to struggle to meet the timing compliance. High concentration of calcium ions in MEG can dramatically affect the MEG regeneration unit duty by scale precipitation or on external and internal sides of exchanger tubes, which hinders the unit to change rich energy to lean energy within the specification as shows. In South Parts, imidazolin based film formed corrosion inhibitor was adopted. In comparison, results of corrosion rate acquired by coupons and ER probes are plotted. 
Complete dehydration of three-phase fluid leads to the lowest general corrosion rate. Accordingly, the next best method experienced was pH stabilization with the most reliable data. Although general corrosion rate acquired by corrosion inhibitors show mild metal loss, however, recent findings proven events of top-of-line corrosion under specific conditions. In one of the lines, which after only two years of operation, a 3 mm localized corrosion was detected, which was due to the stratified flow and inability of corrosion inhibitor diffusion in the gas phase. Severe localized corrosion detected on similar dead leg zones where water-saturated gas is trapped as like top-of-line corrosion. Unfortunately, the only plausible technique to detect metal loss due to top-of-line corrosion is ILI, inline inspection, which is not a frequent application to capture the threat in early stages. Consequently, a diligent dynamic test method is required to evaluate inhibitors' performance on prevention of top-of-line corrosion. On the other side, at the bottom of pipeline, there is a risk for corrosion under deposit, where organic deposit is likely and inhibitor diffusion is minimal. Measuring residual of corrosion inhibitor active component is a key performance indicator to ensure adequacy of chemical to optimize the injection rate while protection is achieved. Hence, care must be taken in reliance on inhibitor residuals as a sole indicator of inhibitor performance. Methyl orange method was used for several years to determine the residual corrosion inhibitor of samples which collects from pipeline outlet at onshore. However, recently it was found that there is some uncertainty on accuracy of measurement of residual corrosion inhibitor in presence of LDHI, low dosage hydrate inhibitors. In order to prove the validity of methyl orange method and probable oversights, a variety of samples in different concentration of corrosion inhibitor and LDHI was tested. Based on the results which is summarized in the table, the amount of residual corrosion inhibitor is overestimated when in conjunction with LDHI compared to real value. For example, when there is 5 ppm of corrosion inhibitor, that is verified by liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy, accompanied by 5 ppm LDHI in the sample, the results show 15 ppm of corrosion inhibitor concentration. As these data show, the resulted concentration do not follow a distinctive pattern which analytical chemists unable to calibrate devices to eliminate the error. It would even be more hectic when sulfur, oxygen, or nitrogen constitutes of Crude such as mercopton are present. Consequently, test methods such as bromophenol blue titration and iodometry has been implemented to assess the reliability when measuring residual corrosion inhibitor in presence of LDHI. Based on the results, highest reliability is acquired when using bromophenol blue titration with only 5 to 10 percent present error. Although pH stabilization and corrosion inhibitor has their own pros and cons, successful implementation strongly depends on the condition and system fluctuations. pH stabilization results in lower corrosion rate and passive layer is more resistive to fluid shear stresses, but it poses higher risks of deposition and requires management of bad actor wells. Both methods has the falling risks inside downstream equipment, which increases the running or maintenance costs. pH stabilization acquires high capital investment, but compared to that, since corrosion inhibitor injection is considered as once through and not going to be recycled in system, it will incur extra operational costs. Moreover, each batch of corrosion inhibitor requires to precisely be tested for effectiveness and partitioning. And most importantly, corrosion inhibitors and hydrate inhibitors may have adverse effects on each other and produce undesirable polymeric, polymeric by byproduct, such as heavy compounds of paraffin or olefin, which leads to a drastic reduction in the heat exchanger efficiency in downstream process. Consequently, most stringent precaution is required to perform the compatibility test and they also avoid to have inject beyond the recommended dosage to prevent sticky substances in downstream. 
corrosion inhibitors are generally not environmental friendly and cannot be disposed in the environment. Most stringent precautions and care is required for safe disposal of inhibitor solutions to prevent any environmental side effect like changing the biochemical oxygen demand. And finally, both methods are not reliably protective against top of line corrosion. We hope that it was a useful presentation and thanks for your valuable time. We look forward to receive your comments and ideas in this regard.